a biology professor at York University, Canada's third largest university in North Toronto, Canada. I think I really wanted to do biology when I was about eight years old and a teacher at my school in London, England took the class to the Natural History Museum. I saw all these amazing dioramas of African animals and I thought, oh, I really would love to study this. My worst subject throughout high school was biology, but here I am as a biology professor. So I think it was really at that point and I have really never done field work in Africa. Maybe one day. <laughs> so the fake news issue is a really big one today. So when I teach courses on how to debunk and understand fake news, I actually start off with explaining the, the politics and the social context for the fake news ecosystem, as I call it. And in fact, the best place to get an insight into fake news is from social sciences research. So I'm in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But for example, if people ask me about combating climate change deniers or skeptics, I actually don't direct them to the science at all first. I direct them to the work of the Yale University Climate Communications Center, for example, and to books by Naomi Oreskes. She's a historian of science, The Merchants of Doubt and also a lovely little book by a man called Andrew Hoffman, who is a professor in the United States, Michigan. Uh, and he's an engineer, but his book is called How Culture Shapes the Climate Change Debate. So there's actually these very interdisciplinary kind of arenas that you have to go to because you'll never actually figure out the science of it. You need to understand the social context. And the other thing I always tell everybody is follow the money. Who's actually making money from this? So I think the first thing is to understand that science is a process and it's really important to understand where your facts come from, to understand that it's constantly changing, there are debates, there is what is peer-reviewed literature, to understand that kind of thing. So that would be a really important thing to do. Another thing would be to have diverse conversations and just do as much reading as you can, whether it's newspapers or textbooks, I love reading textbooks, and just keep learning, be a lifelong learner. And then the third thing to foster critical thinking is just always be asking who, what, when, where, why about anything you hear. And if you can get those answers, you'll be doing critical thinking. Science is something everybody can participate in. And uh, citizen science is something really huge. So there's uh, tons of different ways that everyday people who might have loved science in school, but then couldn't see their way to like a professional science career can actually get involved. And I would urge uh, people to go to, uh, in the case of Canada and ecology, what I do, join in a bio blitz, which are these 24 hour periods where hundreds of people come together to just like identify every species in the Don River watershed or out in Mississauga in the Credit River. And they're super fun. This is a really simple one that people don't think about, is to take what I call an informational interview, where you're trying to build your network um, and just call somebody up. And a lot of people will do this and just say, I'd like to go for a coffee with you. And I'd like to hear how you got to where you are in your career. Like what's the story of your life? Because number one, people love to talk about themselves and their career. And number two, you're gonna get information about the multitude of different pathways. There is no one pathway 